the same um you know, let us fix a happy event. Okay. We help them revive the what goes on in the child is still in the moment there. So this condition usually comes about when there is reduced oxygenation to the baby. Revive revision either maternally or during delivery or in in utero. Any conditions like if the mother anemia, which will cause the reduced oxygenation to the child, and the child there not on the coat or around the neck, head injury, eye when delivering, anything that will cause reduced oxygenation to this baby. So, whatever the cause, when that oxygen is reduced to the child, there are a lot of um, adaptations that happen inside for this child to um, create what? A, a respond, yes, to respond to that the oxygenation. So, uh, one of them is because of those adaptations that happen, you find that the body will start to develop uh, increase in carbon dioxide and uh, acidosis, even uh, the pH, cerebral spinal fluid, um, the CSL, pH goes up, goes low. Yes. And because of those complications, uh, as an attempt to to preserve life for the baby, the human being is designed that the vital organs are prioritized. So this baby, because of that reduced oxygen, the body in that adaptation blocks oxygen to the less vital organs to maintain uh, oxygenation of the vital organs like the, the brain, the heart, the kidneys. So that's why you find that these children are born these. You can see the, the discoloration there, bluish in the extremities. That's what happened. And uh, when that, when the, the insult is worse and it's not corrected, that's when now you see because of the low pH, there is what we call paralysis, right? Intestinal paralysis. The animal sphincter that then relaxes the baby releases meconium into the yeah into the what? The amniotic fluid, yes. Releases meconium into the amniotic fluid and that's when when we do the examination we find the meconium we know things are not okay. If that insult is not corrected again still, this baby in return, because of the lower oxygen, <coughs> the baby will now itself will decide there surrounded by amniotic fluid and meconium, it will decide to breathe, in short. And that's when now they do what? They aspirate. Okay, all this is an attempt that uh, the oxygenation supplied to the pot, to this neonate, has been disturbed. And it's trying by all means to put things back to normal. And if that is not corrected, in time, when these are born, it will have delayed a bit, that's why you find the complications of uh, Cerebral damage for these children. If not, again, this is how the children uh, die. Okay, so this procedure is very important in that it's an emergency. So when we find out this child has been born or is delivered with, um, and is asphyxiated for any reason, we treat it as an emergency. So when I start, I have a tray here. I have my stethoscope and uh, I've got an uh, ambu bag which I'll use for breathing and uh, uh, masks of various sizes, a receiver and uh, a penguin sucker which I'll use to suction and a pair of gloves. What we also need also is a resuscitator. Okay. Uh, with a stair which is working fully with an overhead lamp and um, a timer as well. Okay, so there is a stair um, 
one should be when they are anticipating each other. I come, I delivered, as we say, the warm, the resistance, we prepare the environment, knowing that we might have this child which is going to be delivered this for good, as we say. So we switch on the, the overhead lamp so that the place is warm, and then when you receive the baby, okay, this is where we tell the students this is a stair is tilted at 15 degrees. So you place the baby's head facing you like that, not the other way around. So allow the secretions. If this baby has uh, aspirated to come down and prevent it. Feather aspiration down there in the lungs. Okay, so we put the bed, the baby facing me like that. Tilted this where the baby is laying is tilted at the 15 degree angle. So now before we start, the main thing we need to do since the sustain is on, immediately the child receives the baby. If there are those sustains that have a thermometer on them, yeah, we just have to put them up to explain the way it is. A small thing like it. That's in my watch. Yes. Yes. You place it down there and put the baby on top. Then it will be written that the temperature for the baby as you are doing the process. If not, then you can have a, a, a digital one if you have one. So, uh, in that case, as you before you start the procedure, always remember to set the time. That's step number one. Even in our checklist, that's the first step. The student always has to. Set the timer. If it's not there, they should mention. First thing they do, set the timer. Because this is a time bound procedure. You can't spend the whole day or one hour trying to resuscitate the baby. We are time bound at least 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, that's when you know those risks come in now. The cerebral palsy and all those. So when we set the timer, the first thing we do now, according to the scenario, we tell the, truth, the, the students. If the scenario tells you that it's probably prolonged labor, it has given you an option that there was no way the critical thinking comes in. There was no meconium in the um, amniotic fluid. Then you will know, because what we do, we have to wipe down the head. The first step. You, you wipe that down. Then wipe down the head. So, um, when we suspect that there is meconium aspiration, we tell the children, that's always, according to the scenario, they know that they are supposed to suction first. Because when you are wiping down the baby, you are stimulating breathing. So, in case the child has aspirated, and then you start wiping, you are stimulating the, the breathing. So, we have stopped stimulating the breath like that. So it's just simple, wiping down the baby. As you're doing that, you're also stimulating like that as you wipe. So now, because you're stimulating breathing, if you know this child has aspirated, that's where the steps change. Because the first step is to wipe. And with critical thinking in the procedure, you know there was no aspiration. So I can start to wiping the baby down. And if there was aspiration, that's where I skip the wiping. And the students go to suction interest. So, if there is meconium aspiration, the child suction the baby. And we start with suctioning the mouth, okay, with the penguin sucker. We're trying to encourage students to use the penguin sucker, not a um, suction. suction machine. Because they might go to places where there is no suction machine and use that as an excuse. So, the penguin sucker, you start with the mouth at 5 centimeters, and then you suction, and uh, it's cut. Again, so until you are satisfied that all the meconium is out, then you now go to the nose. The student should mention that now, now suction in the nose at uh, 3 centimeters deep, and uh, it's cut. And then also the other side, until you are sure there is no uh, there, there isn't any meconium that you can see there. Then you can go ahead to now wipe down the baby. 
That is if the child is as exceeding and as created. So, how would the child do that? The scenario we told them. The scenario, yes. Mother delivered a suspected baby. The cornium stained. What just did that mean? The cornium just know that there is a high chance that this one did what? As directed. And they know. They think fast. They say, I'll start first. I want why? Because this one might have aspirated. aspirated. So let me first remove any cornium, then I can now cut down the baby. When you're getting to the child, you're supposed to see if you cover, you miss out some things. They have to be. That's why they eat it there with the baby wall. So when they discard this one, let's go. So now, that's when they go to the next step, which is the to give the rescue breath. Originally, this child when it's born is supposed to start crying, breathing automatically. So we are going to give the Five rescue breaths. So these are like deep, long breaths that you give to the child. So before the student does that, the student has to get the ambi bike and test if it's working. By at least blocking there. So make sure the ambi bike is working. And it's working. Then they also get the mask and measure the correct size. They're supposed to measure the mask. This fall should cover the nose and the mouth. The same time. So for this one, the mouth and the nose need to get covered from there, like that. So we use a size one. So even when we're teaching like this, we tell them size one is the right size, even for our baby, that one there, the size one. But still in the exam, they still use zeros, even if they don't even try to swat it up. It's the same babies. You find students still using one, and you put it to there. So you connect, you teach them to hold the mask like that and push it into the ambi bag and also test. And when they are breathing, they are supposed to make a seal like that. Tilt the head slightly, not but in neutral position, right? not sniffing but neutral position. For children, for older children, sniffing position and adults, you open the airway. For neonates, you put in sniffing position, you have closed it. Uh -oh. You put it that way, you are still closed. So only in neutral position, then you know the airway is open. So you place starting from the chin, that's how the student should place this, and cover there, the nose, the nostril. And then they use these two fingers to apply some slight pressure so that you form a seal. Okay. You apply some slight pressure and form a seal and this finger will lift the chin like that because if you let go the chin will close and the airway so you use the other finger the two fingers are putting pressure the other one is uh, applying that like that so now if any air escapes it means that the, the seal is not formed. So no air is escaping now, like that. So you can just test once and see the chest rising. Then now you give your uh, inflation. inflation breaths. So these are long, you use two fingers, three fingers like that, the thumb and two other fingers, and you give the inflation breaths. So since we said these are long and deep breaths, my fingers are actually touching each other on the ambi back, like that. So you do your count. You want to go one Mississippi, slowly two Mississippi, three satellite, four ancestor, and five record. Yes. <laughs> so after that, you assess. The, I forgot to mention at the beginning, before you even start to assess the Africa score, you quickly do a quick assessment of the Africa score and record. Check the, yes, the extremities, the color, okay, and the breathing, and you also check the pulse rate in your, so this is supposed to actually be personal, because this is personal, my stethoscope. 
Yes, it's very important. Actually, we'll be assessing throughout. So I left the first one. Because after the five, I wanted to assess. I forgot that we did assess. So the first assessment, you get the after score. Even if they have told you after delivering that it's four, you also do your own assessment of the after score. And as the, the, the um, resastia is counting, as you are doing the procedure, you are supposed to assess at one minute, isn't it? So when it gets to one minute, the resastia will make a noise. You tell you now check the after score. You do a quick assessment and record at one minute what you had. Because you are not, there's no time for it to start writing. You have to keep it in your head. And as you do the procedure at whichever step, the resastia will make a noise. Five minutes, you have to do a quick assessment. Whichever step you will be at, at those five minutes. Then at ten, it will make a noise again. And you see the after score. That will help you know if what you're doing is actually okay. If you started at four and by ten, we're at six, then there's a problem. And also the time again means that you are within 20 minutes. At least if nothing happens, then we know that this child has to start having complications. So after we have assessed the after score, the children look for the breathing, they have to assess the breathing check. If the child rise and fall on the chest, um, yes, the, the heart rate. Okay. So for the students, you don't actually count within minutes since it's a, an emergency. You, if you are not sure, you can tap what you're hearing on a surface. Okay. So for them, if they know that the child, the heart beats, I don't know what you told them, 120 to, or is that at 110, some books say 120. Okay, say 100. 100, at least it is over 100. Yes, 100, yes, over okay, 100. using the after score. Yeah. So 100, over 100 in a minute. So, the way the heart will be beating, the child can tell that this cannot reach 100 within a minute. But if you put there and then you just, then you know, okay, at least the heartbeat is there, including for them. So it's not time to start counting. So that's what the, 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 when the children check the after school record. And after giving the five impression break, and the child has not cried, they check the after score again. Okay. The impression break, the one we are giving. Okay. They check the after score. If the child hasn't cried, after each step, you check the after score. After each step, you check the after score. When the five minutes the rest of the six and six can pass me five. It has it's five. It's either it's, it's five. Then it's at then six. Well, we're, we're going to we're going to make patient here. Well well that is healthy. If not, then we have to help it breathe the way it's supposed to breathe. So after those five the child hasn't cried, depending on the scenario which is there. Like the last time the child the scenario below hundred and the breaths are still below thirty. And the student knows when it was doing it. If you say the pulse is now above 100 breaths, uh, uh, the baby is crying. Others continued. Instead of just uh, yes. So, if that's the case, they have to continue. Then they move now to the inflation of ventilation breaths. Now we're just helping the child now breathe the way they're supposed to breathe in real life. Children breathe more shallow than you. The one we did at first they did. There's no So we're giving them the same routine, the inflation, but this time my fingers will not touch like that. So that's how you stand my halfway. Okay. And then we give 15 of these in 30 seconds. Okay. So now you start. So for the child, the, the, the chest is nice like that. Then they are given the ventilation. Not this. No. At least the fingers halfway. So that's the ventilation break. So they give 15. In the exam, we don't ask them to give 15. At least 5. But they mentioned that I'll give 15 of these. Afterwards, they assess. They have to score again. They check for their breathing, the color, all those things, grimace. And then when they do that in the exam, you prompt them again to say the pulse is still below uh, 100. Then they know they are supposed to continue to the next step. 
So after that, the student tells you if the pulse is below 100 and the respirations are still below 30, after doing the routine rhythms, they will repeat. Yes. They will repeat. In real life, if they are working in the world, they have to repeat again in order to see the expectations. In OSC, they just tell you that they will repeat, but then go to the next step. They don't have to repeat all of time, but they have to repeat. So you tell them, okay, yes, that you have repeated it still below 100. Then now they will need the compression. Okay, that's three compressions to one temperature of breath. Okay, so you, they have to use their two fingers and place them between the nipple line there, in between that, at the level of the nipple. That's where they place the fingers and just compress twice. That's if the student is by themselves. They compress three times. Three compressions one, two, three, and then one. Where you put your fingers between the nipple line, the nipples of the baby, and they do the compression one, two, three, like that, with the thumbs. Then, when you are giving the restriction, they they, they let go. Yes. So you be ready with them, that, like that. Then, you, when you tell me to go, we go one, two, three, and I let go. Then they are. System blows in one, two, three, like that. One, two, three, like that. So this one has to let go so that they, we see the rise and fall of the chest. That's how you do it. But when you're alone, you use your two fingers. Like two they have two marks. So help. help! Emergency help. 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 Help.